In this video, we're going to be talking about the importance of chained applications and why we would need to use them. And then we're going to talk about how exactly we can make them within the interface designer. Hello guys, welcome back. This is Archie from the Information Lab. And in today's quick video, we're going to be talking about chained applications. So a quick overview, what they are, it basically says once one workflow runs successfully, another one is then going to run, is going to run subsequently. So, <coughs> excuse me. So just to give you a little bit of context about what this workflow is doing, I'm just going to be talking about the bulk of the workflow first. Um, so we have the sample superstore, um, and then the first tool um, filters by a particular category. The next filter tool um, filters by a specific subcategory, and then we summarize it to get the sum of sales, sum of quantity, and sum of profit. I should mention, just for clarity, that within this filter tool, it, the expression is slightly different. So as you can see, because we have um, a multi-value option in the uh, list box, we have basically said we want to generate a custom list. So that means if you choose more than one options, it's going to create a list. And therefore, because of that, within our filter tool, we needed to write subcategory in phones. So that means it's going to create a list like phones, um, TVs, or whatever's in the list. Um, so it's going to filter by multiple values. However, if we only wanted to do one, we would do subcategory equals and then phones um, in speech marks. So because this is an application, we're going to have a look at the uh, user interface. And the user's first prompt is to select a particular category. So let's say office suppliers. Then if you want to have a look at how, for example, how sub tables are doing, or um, let's have a look at um, bookcases, for example. And then we click Finish to have a look at the output. Let's have a look. Then we get no output basically and that the reason why is that is because within the office supplies subcategory bookcases don't lie within that um that greater group so this is a little bit misleading how we have all of these options however some of them return absolutely no information whatsoever so what we want to do we want to make the select subcategory list dynamic depending on the category the user chooses and the way that we do that is by analytical applications. Nope, by chained applications. <laughs> We're talking about analytical applications. OK, so how do we do it? What is the first step? So the first step is to identify um, a position in the workflow that we can split into two, basically. And a, bit, a really good place to do it in this workflow would be just here. And that's because the interface tools are on separate apps kind of thing. So what we would do, we basically want to copy and cut the second half of the app and put it into a new workflow. So we're going to make app one and app two. So we're just going to cut that. There we go. And we're going to paste it into something completely different. So we're going to paste it here. OK, so we're not going to worry about this for now. We're going to go back to the initial one and we're going to talk about the steps. So the first thing that we need to do, we basically need to make two different outputs. The first output is going to be the input for the second application. And the second output, or so, so the second output that we're going to make is going to be a dynamic um, option for the list. So, so the list of checkboxes, depending on the category that the user chooses. So if we go over and grab a output data tool, then we can call this, um, I don't know, input for app two. Let's just say input what for and we're going to click Save. So the second option, we need it to be um, a dynamic list, depending on what category the user chooses, in order to input and update the second workflow. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the Summarize tool. And we're going to group by the particular subcategory. So we're going to do that. We're going to group by this one. And then we're going to do this one more time. And the reason why we do that is because in order for the input of the interface tool in the next app, it needs to have a, a name column and a value column as well. And we need to ensure that we do this all in, oh, all in caps and spelt correctly. That was a bad example. So then what we're going to do, we're going to output this information as well. Um, we go to files, select files, and we can call this uh, update list in app two. Oh, app two. Brilliant. So this is the first, first app. We can save it. And that's brilliant. So now we're going to head over to the next app. 
So like I mentioned beforehand, there is a reason why we have got two outputs. It's because we need two different inputs. Oh, not a text input. We want a, uh, a normal input. Let's get rid of that. Nice. So this one is just going to be what we called app to input, I believe. Where did we save it? I don't know where I saved it. Ah, we need to run it. That's why we need to do it. So once we've run it, now we can find the, where, where the output is going to be, and it's going to be exactly where we thought it was. So now we need the input for app2, and we're going to click Open. So that's brilliant, OK? So that, that's good. We've now made it dynamic. Now, whatever is chosen in the first one is now going to update the data in the second one. The next thing that we need to do is we need to update this list. So at the moment, there is a manual. Um, I manually put in all this information, but instead we can use an external uh, external source. And here you can understand why we needed to make two different columns when we summarized the previous uh, app. So we've got the name and the value field here. So let's just go find the uh, input. And that is going to be the update list app 2. And click Open. So now what's going to happen, we have uh, a dynamic input, and we also have a dynamic input for the options in terms of the list. So we're going to click Run. OK, so now let's just save this, actually. Let's save the workflow. File, Save As, Browse. We're going to call this App2, and click Save. So now the next option is, or not the, not the next option, the next step is we need to make some sort of relationship between the two apps. And the way that we do that is we head over to the chained app, uh, or the first app, and we go over to Interface Designer. If you're unsure exactly what the Interface Designer does, then just check out my previous video, because I go into this uh, in greater detail. We head over to Properties, and this is the key section uh, that we need to make sure is checked when we make analytical applications. So if you check this box, and what we're going to do, we want to basically state on success, so after the first one has successfully run, we then want to run the second application. So we can just open app 2. On top of that, we have two outputs for this particular case. But we don't want the user to see the, um, these outputs. So we can uncheck these two boxes. And then we can click Save or Run. So now, when we go over to the magic wand to, to see, um, well, to see what the app will run like, we're going to get this option. So first off, you can see the question in your first app. So let's say we want to go have a look at office supplies, for example, and we click continue. We can see that because we haven't checked these two boxes, we um, don't get any outputs for the first uh, for the first app, and that's absolutely okay. So now, when we click OK. It then gives us this second option, which allows a user to choose um, particular subcategories. And as you can see, this has now filtered the amount of um, information rather than having all 16, I believe, subcategories originally. So now if we have a look at fasteners, supplies, and envelopes, and hit Finish, we, and then OK, we can now see that we get an output um, with these three. OK. So that is basically a quick example of a chained application and why you would use it.